Now I know it is a bit hard to get your head round the hollow earth theory. Maybe it's not hollow, maybe it's just caverns or a, an ancient underground tunnel system. I mean if you look at the ley lines, you see that they're straight and we know nothing's straight in nature. So maybe this is a, a, an underground tunnel system from thousands of years ago, what the Anunnaki used to use. What makes me think this is like the, the stories of the Incas. So in the Inca origin story, the sun god Inte ordered Manco and Mama to emerge from the depths of Lake Titicaca and found the city of Cuzco. They travelled by means of underground caves until reaching Cuzco, where they established the first dynasty of the kingdom of Cuzco. So it doesn't say where they travelled from. It just says they travelled by means of underground caves until reaching Cuzco. So this could have been from anywhere. This could have been from Egypt. If you look at the Derin Kuyu underground city, it's a multi-level underground city in Turkey, extending to depths of approximately 60 metres. It is large enough to have sheltered as many as 20,000 people, together with livestock and food stores. It is the largest excavated underground city in Turkey and is one of several underground complexes found across Cappadocia. So why did they have these underground cities? You know, it doesn't make sense. It's like these underground bases today that they have. The, the deep underground bases, I mean. Is this where the cloning technology goes on or is this where the... Um, the elite live, if you get me meaning. And I'm sorry if my voice sounds bad today. If I've woke up feeling like I've swallowed razor blades. So please bear with me. It's, I'm a bit croaky. And this leads me on to the legend of Gartha. The hidden sacred centre of the earth. Which was developed by the French occultist writings from the late 19th century onward. The Indian Brahman's story of Asgartha, a prehistoric solar capital which was the seat of the chief priests of all Brahmins and the manifestation of God on earth, later taken by the invading Aryans. The city was finally destroyed by the Norsemen around 5000 BC. This mythology was greatly elaborated by the French occultists who described the secret city of Agatha as an underground theocracy in the Himalayas that guided the course of world history. Originally on the surface of Earth, Agatha was transferred underground and concealed from the rest of humanity at the beginning of the Kali Yuga, dated around 3200 BC. Here is a technologically and spiritually superior society of millions is ruled by a supreme ruler. Once the surface world has reached a significantly advanced level of enlightenment, Agatha will reveal itself in all its glory and complete mankind in a global transformation. After the First World War, a Polish adventurer, traveller and writer represented a further version of the myth of Agatha in an account of his journey through Siberia and Mongolia after the Russian Revolution. Local Buddhist beliefs which referred to the subterranean kingdom of Agate where the king of the world resigned. It, this utopian realm was created with supernatural powers that could be unleashed to destroy an evil mankind and transform the surface of the entire planet. Apocalyptic prophecies suggested that the king of the world would manifest when the time has come for him to lead all the good people of the world against the bad. 
In the year 2029, the people of Agati would swarm from their subterranean caverns onto the surface of the earth. These ideas of a secret theocracy in the east were supplemented by spiritual power of thrill in the Nazi mysteries. In his novel The Coming Race, Sir Edward Bulger Lytton had attributed this power to the subterranean race of men, the Vrilya, physically far in advance of the human. <laughs>